has to do with development learning and um, on past behaviors. Um, the teacher was the facilitator, and those are things that we will be looking for daily in the classroom. So um, it's a pretty rigorous evaluation tool now that um, will be expected to be implemented. So it's just part of a 65K handout. Sounds like it says University of Washington Center. Um, the Common Core approved this one. Is this, this idea? There's basically three models: the UW Cell Program, the Marzano Program, and the Danielson Program. They, they gave us three choices. They didn't say we could develop our own. Well, I think they well, did. You could, but it would have to mimic one of these. Choosing one of the three models is there, there's considerable professional development for both the administration side and the teacher side to implement the tool. Um, so they have a character, you know, you call it that. Just one more example of uh, Washington, D.C. telling us what to do. Elections have consequences. No more from me. Any other discussion? <laughs> Can we move and second it? All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion carries. Approved Nasa Brazier River Valley School District School Improvement Plan for 2013 through 2016. I move to approve the Nasa Brazier School District School Improvement Plan for 2013 through 16. Second. Moved and seconded. Discussion? We're obligated to have a school improvement plan, and we've actually you know, had one in place. In 2003, I believe, was the first year that um, I was And every year, the strategies, um, the goals do change um, based on what the building improvement team comes up with. So um, they work in their teams, and it's, um, the, the goals are to improve essentially are ultimately shown by virtue of the test results and then plans developed according to how we're essentially how the students do, is that? We do because that, that data is contained within their improvement plan and uh, one of their components and I'm showing what the um, scores were and I do a cohort analysis. Um, so ours, I mean, our, this year's 12th graders um, definitely what we see, the trend in our scores, is that our kids don't necessarily do as well. Um, in most schools, they do very well at the elementary level, and then they have a tendency to decline um, when they get into high school. Where ours are the opposite. Our students may not do as well at fourth grade, and they increase by seventh grade, and then by um, the time they get to the tenth grade, or certainly now this year as as the results have indicated, all students have, in fact, passed the sections of the state assessment as, as required. So but the, 
that's sort of a result as our conversation the other day was that uh, we've been able to teach uh, students how to take these tests better than perhaps the rest of the state. The other thing that you might want to elucidate a little bit, if I no, don't get it right, but we talked about, you know, the scores that students are given, and um, I think it was like a typical 400, you have to, to make 400 points, um, and then, you know, ask, well, how many, how many is the total, what's the, what's the max? Well, one year it's 475, and other years it's different. And to why 400, where does that come from? Well, it, it, it's just an arbitrary number, but you'd be, I think, unhappy to know that, uh, at least I was, that the, the state is grading on a curve. And so uh, the level of knowledge uh, you know, measured uh, in any given year could be uh, pretty sad or could be pretty great. You don't know. Uh, but the school or the state always looks pretty good, though, because they, they dumb down the thing enough to make it look like enough students are doing well. And it's, once again, it's, it, I don't know, it, it's an, it, we've got an institutional problem that's bigger than our school. The, the beauty of it is we live far enough away from Olympia that we can probably get away with a lot of things that a lot of schools can. That's a good thing. Um, not long ago I testified up in Olympia and um, it was nice that they didn't even know where we were essentially, but they, they listened because uh, we're, you know, how can they not listen to someone really small? Uh, and so they did. But um, I, this, this common core thing, the, these, these requirements that, that uh, Karen is talking about, um, these other things that just, um, it's a bureaucratic morass that we're having to deal with. And it's, uh, it hurt, hurts the teachers, it hurts the students more than anyone, frankly. And it's, uh, it's just too bad. I, I, we have to kind of fight this. And the hope that we can do is, is that maybe this school uh, can figure out ways to check boxes off so that when the audits come in, we're OK, but do what we need to do to teach the students what we need to teach them. Further discussion? I move and second and all those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion carries. Okay. Uh, so I have item J, first read. Then you receive the you receive this information in your packet. Right, uh, for the benefit of the audience, we continue to work with Waza on uh, updates. And uh, <clears throat> so this is a, a little bit about uh, what was going on here in one particular district. Is two board members were texting each other during the, the, the meeting, and that was the result of this policy. So um, part of this would be refrained from doing that. Which not, it became very embarrassing that one of the board members actually looked at the sports scores during the meeting and they made a subpoena or not a subpoena for the record request on that. And so uh, that's one thing down here. The second thing is the board members are not required to actually be physically present in the board meeting they can attend, which we have done here by, uh, by telephone. They just have to be able to hear what So we'll do a second meeting on this next time. Uh, this one here, we continue to modify our policies because of the change in the state of Washington about the marijuana. And so the green is the uh, change here. We want to make sure that illegal chemical substances is there. Um, Non-discrimination, you've probably heard a little bit about the Boy Scouts uh, and uh, gay students. And so you know, we're putting that actually uh, into our policy that we, we will provide that equal access to, to the Boy Scouts especially with the changes coming about. And, uh, and then this bottom piece here, I believe the uh, WIA is helping us to do these uh, athletic evaluations and surveys. The rest will probably speak to that a little bit better. Okay, uh, next thing, this is another one, marijuana and cannabis, relations with uh, law enforcement. The staff evaluation piece, you saw the tool that we're going to be using. So this is a policy, it's actually three pages of policy. And so the policy and the tool that we're using have to align themselves um, together. So let's see, it's that. And uh, the last one is the financial reports. And I only put on here the, uh, the green piece of the, this, but watch this wrecking 
asking us to be more transparent as school board with public records requests. And so the suggestion here is that each month or quarter, depending on how many you get, the superintendent will submit to the board the public record transparency report that includes a list of all public records requests received by the district. At its discretion and in an effort to achieve full transparency to the public record requests it received and to which it provides responses, the board and superintendent will post the report on its website. Now here, here, here's why well, this particular uh, report came out. We have two school districts in the state of Oregon that are currently spending thousands and thousands of dollars on public records requests because there's things we can release, there's things we can't release, there's a lot of things that into that. So when we get a public records request, the first thing we do is we, we have to call, we get a hold of an attorney to help guide us on that. And uh, the attorney that we use, they're pretty close to 300 bucks an hour. Fortunately for our school district, that comes under our plan for insurance. But what they want to do is they, they are suggestions to the board, when we get these, how much money are the office people spending? Marilyn and I in particular, <clears throat> gathering this, how much the attorneys cost, and then using it as a budgetary item, but also showing the community what it is that we're spending. Recently, we had one that was uh, well over $15,000. It adds up very, very uh, quick. Okay, so that's first reading on those. I don't know if there are any other questions on those. I must have moved. The school board meeting from June 18th to June 12th. Second. Then moved and seconded. Or right. discussion question. Why do we need to I made the request. You made the request. I made the request. So the board can either allow that or not. So I'll put that to the board. For the discussion. Been moved and seconded. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Business office report. Okay, so uh, I'll start out with enrollment for the month of April. Uh, the K-12 score pretty flat at 261, so that way for the last several months. Uh, CBA uh, in April was 291 FTE. I want to point to May, uh, the public school stayed flat and at 261, but the CBA enrollment dropped by 13 FTE. The reason that is is because we have many students that are wrapping up their, their course years, and because of the increased uh, you know, guidance from the state, we have to be really careful to de-enroll them as, or adjust their FTE as they finish courses. And so, um, it was entirely expected, expected, you know, this time of the year that that would be dropping. We actually graduate uh, three students, back. we just signed their diplomas today. Um, we'll be graduating um, in the next uh, couple weeks. Um, we ended the month of April. Our ending fund cash reserve at about four hundred seventy-nine thousand um, dollars, a little bit higher than than I had anticipated. But then again, I'm pretty conservative in uh, calculating that. Um, I think we're going to end the year strong. Um, the big question is the state legislature. Uh, I heard today, and in, you know, in my seven years as business manager, never heard this. They're looking at not wrapping up until July. Um, that's unheard of, at least in my experience. Um, state law requires us to have a budget prepared and adopted by the board in July. Uh, we can't do that until we have the OSBI tool um, to do the budget. It's all, all in a statewide system. And until the legislature wraps up their session and the government, the governor uh, signs the budget, we can't we can't do that. And so. I don't know if that's going to happen or not. That's hearsay as far as I'm concerned. Um, no one knows what's going to happen, but the 
the legislature is facing a uh, <coughs> difficult time uh, reconciling the two different uh, uh, sides of the aisle, and who knows what will happen there. Um, so that's just something to be aware of. Um, as far as uh, other, uh, I would remind the board that uh, this Thursday, we're going to have our, our accreditation, school accreditation outside review team. Um, about every seven or eight years, the school uh, elects to maintain its accreditation. And what that involves is uh, some work that we do here locally at the school that culminates with an outside review team of approximately eight educators from all over the place, uh, uh, basically Southwest Washington. And they'll be here all day on Thursday, um, interviewing staff, talking to staff, observing classrooms, um, students, etc. And then they're going to uh, be working off of a set of guiding questions that, that the staff have uh, developed. And will be uh, giving us feedback, uh, both commendations and rec recommendations on those guiding questions. And so uh, that will be happening on Thursday. That's all I have to report. I never see, you know, looking on that budget, I, I can see it looked like there was 110000 or so. It was taxes we kept. What did the other extra that we jumped 220000 I don't, all the years that I've been on the board, I've never seen the jump in one month that big. Well, it does happen. Um, the, uh, the way the state apportionment is, is allotted is that the percentage has changed depending on what month you're in. Um, People in the audience probably noticed that their taxes were due in April. <laughs> and so uh, as the taxes are collected, at least the first half, those revenues do come into the district in that month. Um, and so it, it's very common. In fact, if you have a levy, it's always common to, to see a bump in April and May. And it'll start to taper off in June. Um, and then again, it will happen in the fall when the second half is collected. The other uh, aspect there, Gilbert, is uh, Levy equalization. Uh, this school district receives approximately $315,000 a year in levy equalization monies. Those are monies that we collect from the state as uh, a subsidy, only if we have a levy in place. And those are also distributed over certain months, certain percentages. April happens to be one of those months that we, got a, that we get a windfall from levy equalization. And so those two things particularly uh, combine to boost our reserves and, and I expected that to happen. I just don't know, you know the exact thing when it does. So I know they talked about legislative last year of doing away with that recovery legislation. Oh yeah. yeah. But I didn't know whether it would happen or didn't happen. No, it did not happen. It didn't change uh, a bit. Um, thankfully for us and hopefully the, they leave it alone again. So okay, that answers my question.
chops and <laughs> spiders, bugs, uh, bats. We had a bat loose in there the other day, and that was another adventure I won't go into. But um, yeah, like I said, things are a little calm. Uh, <laughs> We got our apportionment from the state. Not a whole deal, deal. I don't know. We're three thousand dollars, about thirty four hundred short. Is that the one you're talking about? Yeah. From. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, oh, okay. So last night, um, some of the men had the opportunity to attend the middle school, high school band performance for the concert, and it was absolutely amazing. It was so.
this and it'll come in and we go down there's a list of nine things that are requested in here and so if they're fairly simple we don't contact anybody but uh, the last time with a request here then it cost a significant amount of money and so we automatically contact uh, Don Austin the attorney who advises us on what can be released and what can't be released so for example we get down in uh, get down into here where the teacher union survey, there's a question whether that can be released all over. The, the teacher sent that to the board and handed that in a box to the administrators. There's a question of what, what that does. And so uh, they rule on that and then possibly the court will rule on that. So uh, the attorney asks us to send it to him and then uh, he sets that out. So what we will do is we continue to get public records requests We'll share those and then we'll put the monies that we have into them. The public record request from this, 10 cents a copy. But it's now they're asking to, again, the public records transparency is saying, put in the number of hours that you're working, the attorney's fees, so that people can uh, people can see that. Do you know about how much this is going to cost us in attorney fees? Uh, this one right here, well, we're well over $1,000. Second one, uh, school board election. I think all of our candidates, uh, almost all of them are here tonight. We have uh, Art Hyland up on the board. I've seen Josh. Josh, you want to raise your hand so everybody can see you. Josh back there. Alan Lebowitz, uh, who is not here uh, tonight, but Bud is here, over here, and he mentioned himself at uh, the beginning. And then we have Steve Gacky back here, uh, running unopposed. The election is November 5th. The reason that this is such an early date on this uh, was because if, there, if there's more than two candidates, they have the runoff election in office. And so there is no there is no more than two candidates, so this will just go on to the, the November election. As we look ahead, uh, Mr. Darcher and Mr. Padia, their terms in on November 30th, or November uh, this year, have chosen not to run for re-election. And Mr. Culper and Mr. Fletcher have two more years, and there it ends on uh, November uh, 2015. And then the last thing I just wanted to share, you can go on our Facebook page to uh, get this, but as you know, we had a tragic incident in our, in our community here just over a week ago, and it's, things are turning out well, but uh, this was something that our kids did, and since I only have this for speakers, I want to, uh, to share this. Um, before I came down here today, it, it, had, uh, it was three, three clips short of 2,000 hits on it. So it had really been, been out there a little bit. Okay. One, two, three. <laughs> Just a nice way to, to wish the school is uh, best that our kids really enjoy it. doing that. And you, you've noticed a lot of purple around, and that's in recognition of Jesse and hoping that she recovers fully and back home soon. Okay, that's in my report. All right, item 12, board members' reports. Do you